Joining me now, Michael Pillsbury, Hudson Institute Director of the Center on Chinese Strategy. Michael, good to see you. Uh, the way I look at Thanks, it is baby. COVID didn't kill enough Americans. Maybe fentanyl poisonings will. Well, the Chinese are being very deceptive, don't you think? I thought Jennifer's report was excellent. She highlighted the criminal syndicates that are doing this. But, of course, behind that is the Chinese Communist Party and the government. Um, this was raised by President Trump uh, somewhat successfully that he got Xi Jinping sort of face-to-face -to, -face to put fentanyl on the controlled substance list. It was a start. Mm -hmm. It looks like things have gotten much worse over the last four years. Um, where you see a kind of a Chinese-style deception that our CIA director correctly said recently, they're a silent partner. That was the key, two key words. China's a silent partner in the invasion of Ukraine. They're also a silent partner here with fentanyl, where the money laundering is very sophisticated, encrypted communications. The way this is all managed, China could easily stop it. If Biden had the, the power, the influence with Xi Jinping that he says he does, he could say, you know, please stop this now, uh, even if it's just criminal syndicates. My fear is that there's a long pattern, almost 30 years. I take you back to 84 when the Chinese provided Pakistan with a nuclear weapons design. It's a terrible thing. They denied it, but they'd done it secretly. It looks like they've, in this fentanyl crisis, they found a way to exploit uh, how they got away with the Wuhan laboratory uh, deception. They had nothing to do with it. They shut down the investigation. That seems to be the tactic here, that they want to deny their way out of this and not do anything unless they get some of the things on their list of demands from President Biden. They've got about 10 things they want from him. And this may be some uh, a way they can get leverage on him. If you want us to solve your fentanyl crisis, you know, you do these five or six things for China. Michael, do you, are you aware of any communications uh, from the Biden administration, whether it was Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, or anyone in um, a mm -hmm. position of authority in, within Biden Incorporated of communicating to China ab about our upset at the fentanyl poisonings here? What, if, what is Biden, what have Biden or anyone else in his administration said to China that you might know about? Well, there are two channels. One is the Biden-Xi Jinping conversation, mm -hmm. uh, where the Biden team keeps the majority of the discussion secret, but they kind of wink their eyes and say, we, we raised everything with Xi Jinping. Right. Uh, the other channel is we, our largest embassy in the world is Beijing. It's 2,300 staffers, including Drug Enforcement Administration, Homeland Security. There are talks directly with the Chinese government on this kind of thing. But as I said, the Chinese deny everything. And then they say, you want us to crack down against these syndicates? You know, we could probably help you, but you need to come across with these Chinese demands, which are pretty uh, scary. One of them is to drop all the tariffs. Uh, Janet Yellen seems to be in favor of that. So I don't think it's a high priority with the Biden team. They want us to believe they're doing something, doing the minimum. But frankly, this is becoming a public election issue so it's disgraceful that they've done so little. Uh, they could start by closing the border. That would help. And, and Michael, in terms mm -hmm. of China, you, they outlawed the raising. I think they did outlaw a few years ago the raising of dogs for consumption as food. But yesterday, the Yulin Dog Eating Festival started once again. So mm -hmm. uh, people can look online at those photos, and it just kind of speaks to the, just the... Um, horrors that are just on yes. display within that country. The reason the horrors are going to continue, I think, is China has got a cheerleading group. I don't know any other word to use, but cheerleaders that just love China. They make money, they lobby, they buy your $20 million apartment buildings in your neighborhood. And it, the deception can continue because they've got this story that China is either going to collapse or become a democracy or is not involved. And so we start seeing through Chinese deception, I'm not very optimistic we're going to get a handle on this problem. They got away with the Wuhan virus, I think. Indeed. Michael, thank you. Good to see you always. Michael Pillsbury.